Today we're going to go over good old biceps, the guns, sun's out, guns out. Um, Biceps are quite often done in gyms, um, not so much in our kind of classes more functionally, but I thought this is an important one for people in general that just follow along on any of these videos. Um, biceps, to hit them, to target them, you have to understand how they work and how you can put them in a mechanical disadvantage. Let's take the classic bicep curl. You have a dumbbell and in your starting position, the dumbbell is hanging from your shoulder. So I can pretty much hold something like, like shopping and it's just hanging down there. So I'm skeletally loading here. So this isn't really gonna tax my bicep somewhat at all. If I now put my hand in front of me, still not. I can hold it here for as long as I want, really. Now, this is a problem because this is minimal stimulation on the bicep. And what we wanna do is activate the muscle before we move it. Um, the next problem that we have is when we do have it at the top of the movement here, if we bring it close to us right now, it's now hinging back on the shoulder. And let's face it, if you want to stop or pause or rest during a bicep curl, you can either rest up here or rest here. You're never gonna to choose to rest right there, right? And there's a reason. So what we need to do is we need to put the body at a mechanical disadvantage so that the bicep is disadvantaged to put the most amount of pressure on it. Now, the difference between advantage and disadvantage is say, if I was to use momentum, swing, bring up something like this, I might use my hips to use my body positioning to put my body at an advantage to move that way. I could even maybe put my bicep on my elbow in a certain position so I can lift that a little bit heavier. What we wanna do if we want to target the bicep, and there's two heads of the bicep, we can start with a brachii, where so we're gonna have supinated hands, a palm facing up. Um, what we're gonna do is put our body at a mechanical disadvantage. So if we now bring our elbow forward in front of our body, from here, when our arm is completely stretched out, our bicep is already a mechanical disadvantage. So I have tension in the bicep just to hold this position. So lift up a little bit there. Okay, so now from here, that's great, starting position. But now if I drive up, I still have that problem at the top. So if I keep my elbow in front, it alleviates the problem at the bottom, but at the top, still got that problem. But at the top, if I rotate forward just a few degrees and I don't have straight down skeletal structure, the bicep takes the pressure again. So if I take advantage of two of these, keep those elbow in front, control it down, and I can even upright my body to get more of a stretch on the bicep there. As I drive up, rotate my body slightly forward, now my bicep has the tension the entire time. Now here's a good point. When you supinate your hand, that is what your bicep does. Your bicep supinates your hand as well. It has part of that movement involved into that bicep, okay? So the more you can rotate that little finger around, the more activation you get in the bicep without even trying. So if you're flexing and then you rotate a little finger, you'll feel it goes even more. So if you've got that dumbbell, you bring it in front of you, the elbow's in front, you now rotate that little finger over, you get more activation again. You drive up, lean forward ever so slightly, squeeze hard while pulling that little finger over, controlling it down for about four seconds, driving back up, squeeze hard, controlling it down. Now we've got our body or our bicep at a permanent mechanical disadvantage. Therefore, we can adequately target that muscle without everything else jumping in, causing more development in the bicep.